In today's video, I want to discuss the possibility of a Vancouver Canucks and New York Rangers trade that might make sense before the season gets underway for those clubs. Plus, we have some big news on the NHL waiver wire with the Montreal Canadiens making a claim from yesterday's players. And we also have some much more interesting names added to the waiver wire list today. Will we see more claims? Plus, we have a new captain in Buffalo and a coach extended. All that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of NHL news and some trade talk to take a look at today. Uh, first up, we got some pretty interesting news from the waiver wire. We have our first claim in a few days with the Montreal Canadiens putting in a claim on former Winnipeg Jet defenseman Jonathan Kovacivic. He's 25 years old. He's a six foot four right shot defenseman. He only has four games of NHL experience, but he's been playing pro hockey uh, for parts of four seasons. So he's got a lot of AHL experience. Uh, He's done pretty well at that level, and I know uh, based on the scouting reports indicate that he's likely trending towards having a good shot at being like a bottom pair defenseman. A lot of teams he could probably be, you know, anywhere from like a 6, 7, 8, depending on how deep the blue line is. So to me, the potential uh, and the size and the fact that it's a free player on waivers, the Canadians were already having some question marks on the blue line. This made a lot of sense for them to put in a claim. There's some more interesting names today, too, as well. I wonder if they and other teams will take a look at. Of course, the Habs have first uh, shot at making waiver claims because it goes by last year's NHL standing. So Jonathan Kovacevic will be the newest member of the Canadians roster. On uh, Today, uh, for NHL waivers, we have some, like I said, some pretty interesting names as well. I wouldn't be shocked if there's one or multiple claims put in that we find out tomorrow afternoon. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs have placed... Joey Anderson and Mac Hallwell on waivers. Uh, nothing too shocking there. The Detroit Red Wings have Austin Zarnick, Matt Luff, and Stephen Camper. Don't know that we'll see any claims there, but still, you never know. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers have Brad Malone on waivers. The Calgary Flames have recently claimed Radham Zahorna, who they picked up from Pittsburgh. He's back on waivers. So the Penguins, where they just recently lost him, they will have first dibs to get him back. And if they do, they can place him automatically into their minor league system without going through waivers again. So we'll see if they try to get their, their player back. They also have Dennis Gilbert and Yusuf Valamaki. Valamaki, I'd be quite surprised if another team doesn't claim him. Obviously, Calgary, you could say they're playing with fire here a little bit. They might lose the young defenseman, but at the same time, they have a crowded blue line, and they're certainly not going to put one of their more experienced, you know, higher paying defenseman on the waiver. So, uh, you know, by acquiring Mackenzie Weger, we said there's probably going to be somebody that ends up on the outs here and uh, not surprising, um, you know, Valimaki is likely that player. Now, if he does happen to clear, I would suspect that will increase his trade value enough that we might even see a trade. Um, sometimes people want to ask why that is. Uh, and the reason for that is sometimes teams don't want to take a chance to take a contract on if they haven't cleared waivers because then they can't place them in the minors. Uh, so essentially, let's say another team like Montreal or you know Chicago, Arizona, anybody who's not as deep on the blue line really wanted to grab Valimaki, but they're not sure if they want him to stick at the NHL level they would need him to put him through waivers again to demote him at some point if they want him to go down, and then they could risk losing him themselves. But if he clears on the other end and then you make a trade, then you have the next 30 days where he can play on either squad. It just gives you more flexibility. And some teams as well sometimes need to move a contract themselves to take another one back. So it's not always as simple as getting a free player on waivers. Sometimes there's you know salary cap or other contract implications that you have to factor in. But Valimaki to me is an interesting player that wouldn't be shocking to see get picked up. Uh, the Seattle Kraken have forward Alexander True on waivers, as well as goalie Joey Decord. Now, I know the Ottawa Senators picked up uh, Helberg on waivers, their other goalie that they had on here a couple days ago. Um, uh, Joey Decord's a former Ottawa Senator goalie who they really didn't want to lose, but they, they, he was their pick in the expansion draft. So, certainly, I, I kind of wonder if Ottawa might be having some... Uh, Second thoughts here. I wonder if they would try to get Joey Decord back and end up putting Helberg on waivers himself. Now, of course, we'll see. Helberg's getting his first taste of action with the Senators tonight uh, in their last exhibition game for the preseason, doing battle in Craft Hockeyville here in my home province of New Brunswick against the Montreal Canadiens. So we'll see how Helberg does. The reason they picked up a goalie is because Cam Talbot's out. 
for uh, probably the first month of the season, and they needed somebody to help back up Anton Forsberg so that their other goalies could stay in the minor. So certainly be interesting to see what happens with Joey Decord. If it's not Ottawa, I'm sure other teams have been watching. He's done well at the minor league level as well. Uh, the Buffalo Sabres have a few players, including Jeremy Davies, Chase Prisky, and Kale Clegg. The Pittsburgh Penguins have defenseman Mark Friedman. The Avalanche have a couple of former first-round picks in Shane Bowers and Martin Kaut. Uh, it was trending earlier in the preseason that Kaut might make the roster out of the uh, to begin the season, but things have kind of changed a little bit. Uh, Jared Bednar basically said that he was just a little too quiet in the last couple of games, and they're going to try to send him down. Um, but you know, he and Bowers would likely be a couple of their first forward call-up options, depending on injuries or whatnot through the year. So be interesting to see if either of those former first round picks uh, get picked up. And then the Vancouver Canucks have Sheldon Dries and defenseman Christian Milan and another defenseman that's bounced around a bit. And I, you know, he's another guy who wouldn't be shocked maybe if a team picked up. So there's some interesting names there. We'll see. We'll find out tomorrow in the afternoon if there were any additional claims. Uh, the Calgary Flames today announced a multi-year contract extension for head coach Daryl Sutter. Uh, Daryl Sutter was entering the final year of his original contract since he came back to the team. Uh, he, he himself said basically he had a, given a commitment to Brad Tree Living that he would see this through and I uh, wanted to make sure he did that. Obviously, Brad Tree Living, the GM, also was entering the final year of his contract. I suspect that'll probably be the next bit of business we hear out of Calgary, um, at least from the, you know, besides the player stuff. I mean, you never know. We could see a trade or a pickup or something, but um, the Flames have had a very busy, very successful offseason. Uh, now they've extended Uyghur, which we knew was being worked on. They extended Huberdo. Obviously, they got Kadri in the, in the late into the offseason as a free agent. Um, I still think, though, that they might be looking for another forward. They haven't been pleased with their PTOs that they've had. Guys like Milano and Eakin didn't really work out. So I do wonder if, if maybe they try to grab another forward, either either off waivers or through trade. But we'll see. Otherwise, a, a tree living extension likely coming soon as well. Um, but Sutter gets a two-year deal. So he's there for counting the season that's about to start three seasons. And I kind of wonder if at that point he might be looking to retire. I mean, I know he's getting older, but we'll see. Um, but Daryl Sutter sticking around in Calgary. And really it makes sense for them to hang on to him. He's done extremely well there. Uh, the Buffalo Sabres have finally named a new captain. Of course, they haven't had a captain since uh, they took the C off of Jack Eichel. And the new captain is NHL veteran Kyle Poso, which to me is a good choice. I, I know I've seen some people questioning it on social media. To be honest, Kyle Poso is, is a veteran guy. Uh, from all accounts, from what I've seen and read and heard and the different interviews from the, the Sabre staff, teammates, um, he, he's an extremely well-respected well-liked teammate who's not afraid to speak up and certainly uh, has a lot of captain-like quality. So I'm not shocked at all that he's the choice. When I had heard from the Buffalo Sabres earlier in the preseason here that they had intentions on naming a captain uh, before the regular season started, uh, he was one of the first guys that came to mind. I thought it would either be uh, Ocposo or maybe Alex Tuck. Uh, my only concern with Ocposo was the fact that he's entering the final year of his contract. So obviously, without an extension in place, the future of the player in the team. You know, there's always that uncertainty there. I wouldn't be shocked, though, if Ocposo re-signs with the Sabres at a much lower rate and right stays on for a couple more seasons. Uh, obviously, he had one of the, uh, you know, unfavorable contracts, you could say, from that 2016 UFA class. There was a lot of deals that went wrong that year, and a lot of GMs made a lot of boo-boos on July 1st, 2016. Um, but Ocposo was certainly one of those contracts that never worked out. He's been making too much money, but he's been through a lot. Like I said, from just regardless of the contract, he, he does have a lot of good qualities to be captain. His alternate captains or assistant captains will be uh, Zygmunt Gergensens and Rasmus Dahlin. I'm a little surprised Alex Tuck is not getting a letter here. Uh, he's the hometown guy. Seems to have a lot of those same good quality, uh, leadership qualities. Um, you know, he's going to be there a long time. I thought maybe he would be in the mix, at least in the leadership group. I'm a little surprised by that, not to take anything away from the other guys. I have no idea from when it comes to Gergensen's or Darlene, what they're like in the room personality-wise or anything of that nature. Um, so I can't really comment on whether or not they should have a letter, but I know just a little surprised Tuck did, but obviously not everybody can have one. So certainly the Sabres uh, have their uh, first captain here in a few years uh, since uh, Jack Eichel 
was stripped of the C. Now, uh, on to the other trade scenario that we might see play out here. We've seen the Vancouver Canucks make a trade late last night with the Chicago Blackhawks picking up defenseman Riley Stillman. And there's some that think that they may not be done here in the next couple of days. Uh, and there's a, it started with an article from Arthur Staple in The Athletic, and I've seen other uh, media kind of discussing the same sort of possibilities uh, that's been known from a few sources that the Vancouver Canucks are very interested in trading Michael Furlan, who's not going to be playing any longer, but his remaining contract, which can be used for long-term injury reserve, might be interesting or enticing to other teams who need to you know spend above the cap. There's all kinds of teams that are really tight up against it and would love to be able to spend over, but of course there are different implications to to having that done, of course. Um, it makes it challenging and calling out players. Uh, it makes it challenging to accrue space that you can use later in the year for deadline acquisitions and all that. But some teams don't have a choice. Like look at Vegas, for example, Montreal. They're all operating in that kind of a pool of LTIR money. And the New York Rangers, of course, who Staple covers for the Athletic, is uh, what he thought might be somebody interested in doing now. Like we've heard from a lot of other sources that the furling contract certainly is available. There's no doubt about that, that the Vancouver Canucks would like to move on for a night contract. They'd rather not operate in LTIR. So if a team like the Rangers or others that would be interested in this would be certainly willing to talk business. Obviously, the Rangers, like many teams, are tied up against a salary cap. And right now, it's not quite clear exactly what their full opening night lineup is going to look like. They do have some injuries they're dealing with, which certainly could complicate things a little bit. I'm not sure they really have any injuries that'll be long-term. They require any other additional contracts going on LTIR, but certainly a scenario where um, they could use the extra availability, you could say. Uh, obviously, it looks like right now a player like Vitaly Kravstov, who was kind of penciled into the top six by many going into the preseason, has now kind of played his way out of it. and looks like they're not likely going to place him on waivers or anything to send him to the minors because we know how that worked out last time. Uh, of course, he was not uh, requiring waivers then, but that's kind of the big thing that really damaged the relationship between the team and the player. But at this point, it looks like he might be sticking around as the 13th forward and may not be in the lineup on opening night. So we'll see what the Rangers do. Uh, obviously, you know there are other teams out there that could be contemplating a move like this. Um, there's other contracts out there within the NHL world that could be moved for similar purposes. Uh, obviously, and one other one that was mentioned in this article was Andrew Ladd in Arizona, but I'm not sure that the Coyotes necessarily want to do that. Uh, obviously, you know some teams are, I guess, not as concerned about their cap situation right now. The Coyotes, on the other hand, uh, they're a team that we're probably expecting some other moves from. I know we're kind of still waiting for things to happen with Jacob Chikorin. And it's still kind of sitting. But, of course, I think nothing's likely going to happen until he's ready to get back on the ice and play, too. So um, I don't know that Lad's contract's really something that they want to do. So Furland's is one of the main ones getting attention from around the league. So could we see Michael Furland to the Rangers? Uh, what would the requirements be in that kind of a deal? I don't know that the Rangers would really want to offer much of anything back to the Canucks, considering... Uh, you know, they're taking an LTIR deal off their hands, but I would suspect that the fact that they're going to be willing to go and spend over, they would be some sort of a return package, but it likely wouldn't be anything much. But look for a potential Michael Furlan trade to get that contract off the Canucks books here over the next few days. Doesn't mean it's going to happen for sure, but it seems to be a lot of talk around it right now. So we'll have to stay tuned and see what happens. If you're new to the channel, of course, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.